Now, let's look at the emperors. Who were the emperors that persecuted Christians, that persecuted Christians? So, let us look at the different emperors, eh? different emperors that persecuted the Christians. So, the first one was the uh, Emperor Nero. Emperor Nero. Remember, we mentioned Nero some time back. Now, he was there as an emperor between 54 AD up to 68 AD. That was the period when uh, Emperor Nero was leader of the empire. Now, he was the first, the first Roman emperor to persecute Christians. So, who was the first uh, uh, emperor to persecute Christians? It was Emperor Nero, 54 to 68 AD. So, he accused Christians. He accused uh, Christians uh, of setting ablaze the city of Rome in 64. AD. So in 64 AD, he accused the Christians uh, uh, of starting the fire in the city of Rome. So, uh, but that fire was started by him in order to speed up the anti Christian campaign. So, what he did was that himself he commanded uh, the burning of a certain side of the city. Then he put that blame on the Christians to say, hey, Christians, you have started the fire. So, because you have destroyed the city, we are going to destroy you. So, uh, he did a lot of things to, Christ, uh, to the Christians. For example, he killed the Christians by crucifying them. So, he was crucifying the Christians on the cross. And men, women, and children were thrown uh, to the wild animals to provide entertainment to the people. So, that's what he did as well. He was uh, killing. He killed the uh, the people, men, women, and children, they were thrown into the lions, the leopards, in the wash of the peoples uh, for entertainment. So uh, he also killed Peter and Paul. So uh, that biblical Peter and Paul were killed by uh, Emperor Nero. And also he poured tar on believers and set them ablaze uh, at night to act as torches. So you can see to it that uh, Emperor Nero was so cruel. What he did was that he, he killed the apostles. He also poured tar. Tar is like a, uh, you are pouring petrol on someone and setting them that one on fire so that uh, they provide light at night. So he was doing that at night. The Christians uh, were gathered there and poured tar on them at night. Then uh, they were lighting them. So they were uh, providing light as they were uh, as they were dying with fire, then that one, to them it was like, ah, now Rome has got light, as we have electricity now. Uh, by then, he provided electricity uh, in that way by lighting the Christians. So, that was so pathetic. And another emperor was the Emperor Dominician. Dominician. So, Dominician was the emperor in 96 AD. So, the first Roman emperor to call himself Lord and God. So, himself, uh, he called himself as Lord and God, just imitating what the Christians were saying. Say, no, you Christians, you have to worship me. I am the Lord and God. So, he ordered people to honor and worship him as God, but the Christians, they refused to do that. So, he accused the Christians of plunging the empire into total poverty. So, uh, he accused the Christians to say, you are the ones who are bringing in poverty because you are making some people lazy. They are refusing to work in different places. And the other emperor was Marcus Aurelius. Marcus uh, Aurelius. So, he was there in 161 to 180. Uh, 161 to 180. So, he forced Christians to curse the name of Jesus Christ and bent them to death. So uh, he bent people like uh, uh, Speratus and Polycarp, the bishop of uh, Sumna, 
and North Africa. So he bent them, those the leaders of the Christian or Christianity uh, in Sumna and in North Africa. He bent them because they refused to curse the name of Jesus Christ, to uh, renounce that they are no longer Christians. So those ones, because they refused, they were uh, killed. And by the way, Marcus Aurelius, during this period, it was the uh, it was the highest period where by the gladiator fighting, it was at its peak just during that day, uh, Marcus Aurelius. Even in that movie, when you listen to that movie, uh, it is being mentioned, the emperor who is being mentioned there is Marcus Aurelius. Then the emperor, there was also Emperor Septimus Severus. Uh, he was there in 202 and 210 AD. So uh, this one, he prohibited all Romans from becoming either Christians or Judaist. So you see to it that uh, really things change. Uh, well, at some point in time, Christians, uh, they were enjoying some peace, but this time around, things were not okay. So he condemned them, uh, he condemned all Romans not to become Christians or Judaists. So he condemned Christians to death, usually when Christians uh, were found uh, doing anything, he said, these people, they deserve to die. So he was condemning them to death. And also he killed Perpetual and Felistas uh, of North Africa. These, were, these ones were the leaders of the church in North Africa. Then there was also Emperor Decius. Emperor Decius, he was there between 250 and 251 AD. 250 and 251 AD. So he decreed that all people except the Jews should offer uh, sacrifices to the statue of uh, the emperor. So he ordered that one. So he co uh, the command was called the Edict of Sacrifice. The Edict of Sacrifice. So those who disobeyed to offer uh, were put to death. So he said all the people except the Jews, uh, they were to offer the sacrifices uh, uh, to the statue of the emperor. And those who were disobeying that one, they were put to death. So it was a danger there for the Christians because uh, Christians were many now. They were not only the Jews. There were uh, many people who embraced Christians. So those who did not do that, they were put to death. And there was also another emperor, Emperor Valerian. Emperor Valerian, he was there as the emperor between 51 and 60. Uh, 251 AD and 260 AD. So after the death of Decius, uh, there was Emperor Valerian. So Valerian, he confiscated church buildings and arrested uh, its office bearers. So uh, he, uh, he grabbed all churches to say, all those churches now, they belong to, to me, to the empire. And all those people who work there in the churches, uh, uh, they were put uh, into prison. So he murdered a Cyprian, a Cyprian, the bishop of North Africa. So it was really uh, bad there, you see, to the leaders of the church in Africa. They were, most of them, they were killed. They were, uh, they were persecuted. Then there was also another emperor, that is Emperor Diocletian. Diocletian. So this one was there between 284 AD and 305 AD. So he put an allegation that Christians intensified uh, the weaknesses of the Roman Empire. So uh, uh, he accused the Christians to say they were uh, uh, intensifying the weaknesses of the Roman Empire. So Rome was hit by a uh, by acute economic problems and wars. So those ones, they were uh, attributed uh, to Christians as the ones who had provoked the, that, the, uh, that fate to say, all right, these wars and all the economic problems, they are brought by the Christians. So to revive the empire, he issued a decree. A decree is a, a king's command, a king's or the leader's command. Uh, so what was that command? To destroy all Christian churches, arrest 
all church officers, including the bishops, and also burn all Christian books, including the Bible, and also force Christians to offer sacrifices to the Roman pagan gods and the statues of the emperors. And not only that, also uh, he declared that all Christians as outlaws, they stripped uh, off their Roman citizens and uh, they were killed. So he declared that all the Christians, they were the outlaws. That is to say, they were the people who have gone outside the Roman principles. Therefore, their Roman citizenship was taken off and later on they were declared to say, all right, everyone who says he's a Christian must be killed because his or her Roman citizenship has been taken off. Now let's look at the end of persecution. So persecution ended. So how did it end? Uh, there were some emperors who ended these persecutions. So in 306 AD, between 306 and 337, there was Constantine who became the uh, Roman emperor. So this one, Constantine, he was the first Christian emperor now. So things changed. But things, again, may turn out to be good at some time. So that's why uh, when sometimes things are bad, uh, just keep on uh, doing what is good. Because sometimes it may not be you, but the, uh, the following generation may enjoy your persistence. So uh, Constantine himself, the emperor, well, uh, the previous emperors were persecuting uh, the Christians, but himself, he became a Christian. So he became an emperor in 306 AD and is regarded as the second founder of the empire. This one is regarded as the second founder of the empire, that is Constantine. So he realized that further persecution of Christians would be uh, futile, uh, that their support would greatly strengthen his position in the empire. So he saw to it. Sometimes in politics, you just capitalize on the weaknesses of your friends. So Constantine, he saw that, oh, my uh, uh, predecessors, all of them, they were killing uh, a lot of the people, the Romans and maybe all others. So how can I get the support of these people who are being persecuted? So he said, all right, uh, yeah. He, he thought to it, say, all right, my position can greatly be uh, strengthened if all these people are uh, put in the right place. So he also believed that he would secure the unity of the empire if he gained the goodwill of the Christians. So he thought that if the Christians, uh, the Christian persecution stops, then he was going to uh, secure unity of the empire. So he converted, he was converted to Christianity in 312 AD after uh, the great battle of Milvian, the Milvian Bridge battle against Maxentius. So there was that battle between him and others. So there, uh, then he was converted into Christianity, that is Constantine. So before that battle, uh, before the battle, Constantine is believed to have a vision. So it is said that he had a vision in which he saw a cross. He saw a cross inscribed with the words in Italy, in Italian, which uh, or in Latin, which were in hope, sino sincere, uh, and that one uh, it was uh, the Latin. It is the Latin, which means or which meant. Uh, by this sign, you shall conquer. By this sign, you shall conquer. So he saw a cross, and that cross was written, uh, the words to say, by this sign, you shall conquer. So during the battle, he emerged victorious and attributed the victory to the Christian God to say, no, I have won that battle because of that vision I saw of the cross, which said, by the sign of the cross, Go and conquer. So he thought to say, no, uh, which is the religion that uses the symbol of the cross, uh, uh, therefore it's Christianity. Then he said, no, I have won the battle because of the Christian God. So also Constantine's mother, 
uh, who was called Helen, was a Christian. And this may also have encouraged him to embrace Christianity. So his mother was a Christian and uh, it also encouraged him to do so, to accept Christianity. So persecutions of Christians finally ended and the church property was restored and Constantine became the protector of the church. So the same emperor, the same seat of the emperor that was against persecution, now we see that it was uh, the same uh, the same seat now that is protecting Christians. So all the church pro uh, properties, remember we said that the church buildings were confiscated by the emperors. Now they were restored. They were given back to the Christians and Christians were protected. And eventually uh, he also declared himself head of the church and was uh, the Christian emperor uh, of the Roman Empire. So somehow, much as the uh, things went on well, but uh, you can spot it there that uh, that was uh, also maybe the beginning of uh, another problem inside the church. Because now the leader is not persecuting the church, but he has just declared himself to say, I am now the leader of the church. I am now the leader of the Christian church. Uh, that is uh, in the Roman Empire. So you can see to it. Uh, what happened there. And there was also uh, Theodosius. Theodosius was there as the emperor between uh, 18 or, uh, 381 AD. Uh, in 381 AD, that's when he became the emperor, that is Theodosius. Now he was intolerant of paganism, but was very tolerant to individuals. So uh, this one, he was another kind of a leader, whereby he hated uh, he hated sin, just as God is. We say God hates sin, but he loves the individual. So God loves an individual, the sinner himself, as an individual, but he doesn't, or he hates the sin. So exactly that's what uh, Theodosius uh, did. So he hated paganism, but uh, he was very tolerant, tolerant to individuals. So he appointed both Christians and pagans into his public office. So those people who were practicing paganism, he appointed them as leaders in his empire and even Christians. But he hated paganism, but he loved the individuals. So you can see there. So Christianity became the state religion uh, all through uh, the blessings of uh, Theodosius I. So he embarked on a series of efforts uh, aimed at destroying paganism from the empire. So, for example, in 381 AD, he issued the orders forbidding any Christian to join the ranks of uh, the pagans. So he forbade the Christians not to join the ranks or the duties of the pagans. And in 391 AD, he issued orders forbidding persons to enter pagan temples. He said no one should enter the pagan temples. And 392 AD, he forbade uh, the worship of the gods in secret and thus closed all the sanctuaries. He said the gods must not be worshipped in secret. The, it must be, uh, the god must be worshipped at the public places. So, he closed all those secret uh, places where they were worshipping the pagans. And also he gave the ancient temple, temples to Christians and ordered to destroy, to destroy all the pagan sanctuaries. So there were big temples there for the pagan gods. So he said, all oh, these ones now, they are no longer pagan temples. I am giving them to the Christians. So they were used as churches, those the ancient temples. Now, let's look at the church, how it was organized, organization of the church. So, mind you, uh, we are exploring more on Christianity here. I hope you are really following uh, how uh, the Christian church uh, uh, was uh, originated and how, well, in the circumstances in which the Christian church uh, passed through. So here we are at the organization. How was the Christian church organized? 
So under this organization, every Christian congregation, uh, you know, it has elders, uh, had elders, deacons who uh, are chosen from its uh, members. So uh, the Christian church, just as it started long ago, they have the deacons and the elders chosen from the members. So religious worship is organized and led by a priest. Uh, so religious uh, worship uh, was, or it all started by organizing uh, uh, the office of the priest. So at the head, as the head of a group of the congregations, or, or at the head, the group of the group of uh, congregations, or a diocese, that is a group of congregation, that is to say a church, a church, a church, a church, many churches, they form a group of all those churches. That one, it is called a diocese. So, um, like in Catholic, it is called the diocese, maybe in Anglican, they call it the dinare, I don't know uh, other churches, but there is there. Uh, it is called a, a, a grouping of different congregations. In SDA, they call it a district like that. So it's all the same. So others, they call it a diocese. Others, they call it a, they call it a dinare. Others, they may call it a district uh, like that. So uh, it is all the same. So, so at the top of that one is the, the uh, senior priest. Uh, there was the senior priest uh, was called a bishop. So the bishop was the, the leader, the leader of uh, uh, of that grouping of different churches. And a number of dioceses they form a province under the archbishop. So uh, a number of uh, uh, dioceses they formed what was called the arch uh, a province under the archbishop or archbishop so in the early years of the christian church the archbishop of rome uh, the archbishop of uh, the archbishop of rome the archbishop of jerusalem the archbishop of uh, antioch the archbishop of uh, uh, constantinople the Archbishop of Alexandria, that is North Africa, they were called the Patriarchs. They are called all called the Patriarchs or the Church Fathers, the Fathers of the Church. Now, uh, the Patriarchs uh, of Rome regarded themselves as uh, the most important of all. So you can see the reason there. The Patriarchs of uh, Rome, they considered to say we are at the top of uh, every patriarch why because they were near the emperor where the emperor was living and the emperor himself declared to be the head of uh, the state therefore they were given the name pope they were given the name pope uh, derived from papa papa which means father so he was like the father of all the archbishops so pope regarded himself as the successor of peter uh, the apostle. So that Pope of Rome was regarded himself as the, the successor of uh, the apostle Peter, who was uh, regarded as the first bishop of uh, Rome, the first bishop of Rome. Now, why was Peter, uh, uh, why Peter uh, was regarded as a Pope? Number one, Jesus had chosen him to uh, to lead the church, to lead the church. So uh, this is uh, confirmed in the Bible as Jesus proclaimed him as uh, the lock on which uh, he was going to build his church according to Matthew chapter 16, verse uh, 18 to 19, where Jesus said, uh, you are the rock and on this rock I'm going to build my church. So uh, Jesus gave him the keys of the kingdom of the heaven. That's what they were taking it to say, right? Because the, Jesus said that, therefore, Peter was the first father uh, of the church. And Peter, uh, Peter's martyr's death in Rome. Peter died as a martyr in Rome. So remember, he died as a martyr. We said that he was persecuted under uh, the emperor, under the emperor Nero. So a martyr is a person who dies because he 
or she refuses to give up certain beliefs. So martyrs are the people who do not want to be uh, to, uh, uh, to give up what they hold on or what they believe. So what were the reasons that led to the Bishop of Rome to be acclaimed to the Pope? So here we are going to see the reasons why the Bishop of Rome uh, became to be known as uh, the, uh, the Pope. Number one is the apostolic succession, the apostolic succession. So this established a link between Jesus and the office of uh, the Pope, since the first Pope was chosen uh, by Jesus himself. That is uh, Peter, uh, Simon Peter. So here we are saying that uh, they wanted to maintain the apostolic succession. So Peter was chosen to be the first leader of the church. So they wanted to maintain that one. Say, all right, after Peter, then this, then this, then that. Yeah, like that. They wanted to maintain the apostolic succession. And also political vacuum. They wanted, uh, uh, there was that political vacuum. So the College of Cardinals was empowered to elect a pope uh, to counter uh, the pressures from feudal lords and emperors. So uh, there was a group of the cardinals, those ones, they were the ones who were uh, empowered to elect someone to act as the, the successor of Peter, as the, the father of the church. So when the emperor Constantine moved to the, uh, moved the capital of the empire from Rome to Constantinople in 330 AD, the pope was a uh, most powerful figure who remained in Rome. So he thus filled the power vacuum uh, left by Constantine's decision. So when Constantine became the leader, see what happened here. He removed uh, the capital from, from Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire from Rome to Constantinople, to Constantinople. So there, Constantinople was another city. So he declared that to say, all right, uh, now, uh, uh, Constantinople is going to be the uh, the the next uh, the next capital city of the Roman Empire. He did that maybe uh, to suppress the legacy of the previous emperors. To say Rome was associated to the persecution of people, so he wanted to create that independent state to uh, independent uh, or a pure. Uh, capital city without any bad reputation. But that one, it created a power vacuum to the uh, previous capital city. Therefore, the, uh, the, pope, the Pope was the most powerful in Rome there. He was the most powerful leader uh, because already uh, the emperor had declared that Christianity is now the, uh, the, official, uh, the official worship and it destroyed all the pagan worshiping. So with that then, it was like uh, the leader of the church, he was most, uh, most influential. And another reason was the honor, honor of Bishop of Rome. So uh, Christ elected the apostle Peter to succeed him as the leader of the church. So that was what he, the interpretation uh, that is taken there to say he was taken to, uh, to be the leader. And the Bishop of Rome inherited the authority that Christ gave to Peter. So it was like the Bishop of Rome who took maybe the office of the Pope uh, associating it to Peter. Then uh, they said, all right, we are inheriting that authority that Jesus gave it to Peter. Now the authority is with us. So uh, the Bishop of Rome was the first, was first occupied by Peter, the leader of the Christ's disciples, who was killed in Rome, uh, and the position was given as an honor to the order, uh, like Peter was the head of the church. So we see to it that uh, the first bishop or the first leader of the church in Rome was Simon Peter. Now with that then, they wanted to continue that legacy by honoring the office or the leadership of Peter as it was uh, given by Jesus Christ. 
And again, the scripture writings, the scripture writings also uh, was the one. So it is recorded in the scriptures uh, that Rome was given uh, the primary, uh, the primacy over all churches. So this one it is taken again uh, on uh, Matthew 16, uh, Matthew 16, uh, 17 to 18, and John 21, uh, 15 to 17. So check out on those biblical texts if they really, uh, they really say that the uh, uh, Rome was supreme to others. And again, uh, Rome as the capital, Rome as the capital. So the fact that the, it was the capital of the empire, it seemed reasonable for Rome to be the center of the church. Therefore, the leader of the church assumed that leadership of authority over all others and personal qualities of the Bishop of Rome. So the Bishop of Rome was uh, elevated to the uh, to the church because of their personal qualities, the personal qualities of the occupants of the office. So uh, in that office, they were not just choosing someone to say, all right, uh, last year it was this one, this year it is you, no. They were taking the special personalities of those people.